Hello friends, in this video I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the Traders Workstation, the trading platform of Interactive Brokers and I'll uh, particularly go through some of the functionalities that are helpful for um, option traders. So what you have in front of your screen and throughout the video I'll recommend that you keep following my mouse so that you would know what all are the areas on the screen that I'm pointing at. So what you have over here on your screen is the mosaic outlay, which is the default outlay. And on the right hand side, you can see your entire portfolio. You can even create uh, any of the watch lists. As you can see, I have some of them over here. And this is my portfolio. And here are a bit of a details. If you click on the account plus sign here, it shows you um, sort of like a snapshot of all the buying power available, all the margin that you have utilized so far and so on. So what you can do is, if you would click any of the assets that you could be holding or from any of your uh, watch lists, you would see that on the left hand side over here, you can see the bid ask spread and some other information, like literally the snapshot related to that particular asset that you've clicked on. And this is a minimized version of the chart. If you would click on this square sign over here, it will maximize. Um, most of the functions are pretty much same uh, when it comes to the charting function of Interactive Brokers when compared with uh, the TradingView platform. So if you've been viewing your charts on TradingView, which is a website, um, then you would see that a lot of functions are actually quite similar. In fact, I think um, Interactive Brokers could be sourcing their charting data and outlay from uh, TradingView but I'm not too sure about that. I've never done that kind of research. This is the order related panel. You can buy or sell the same asset that has been laid out over here or the one that you clicked on over here. And this is the summary of um, all the trades that have been executed or all the live orders and stuff like that. On the right hand side at the bottom, you would see that you can uh, constantly keep getting feeds from uh, the interactive brokers on any news that has been coming up, uh, be it related to market or your individual portfolio. You can even add any of the asset over here and it will show you the information related to that particular asset. But this is not really a very helpful screen when it comes to options trading. So what we can do is we can click on the plus sign over here at the lower bottom on the left hand side. And what we can do is we can either create our own custom layout, which frankly I've never done before. And I also don't intend on doing that um, because of um, the other pre-built layouts that um, this Traders Workstation offers. And I find them good enough um, for my trading purpose. So what I did is I clicked on the browse button and here you would see that there are lots of pre-built layouts depending upon the kind of trading that you want to do. If you want um, exclusive screens for let's say news and research, then you can click over here. It'll show you some of the um, exclusive screens that are very helpful. Um, personally, I haven't really um, added any of these, um, but, but I think they're really helpful. I don't do much of a research on um, the Traders Workstation platform, but if you are someone who likes to stay updated, then you can consider adding one of these layouts so what I usually do is I go for options and there are two layouts here that I have utilized in past. And the first one is option trading. And this is typically for option traders. You'll find a lot of helpful information, including the uh, options chain in this layout. So I'll go ahead and add this. Once I click on add, it will show this layout over here at the left hand side bottom. And now that you've added it, it would always appear over here. So you don't have to add it every time you uh, log in into the TWS. So I'll go ahead again and I'll go to browse and I'll go to options and add the layout related to write and rollover options as well. Now this window, to be very honest, I haven't really used this window too much either, um, but this actually serves two main purpose. One is that you can write covered calls as you can uh, again follow my cursor um, whatever holdings that you have you can write covered calls against those I'm not a great fan of writing covered calls but um, this is you can think of it as a slightly more automated way of writing 
call options on your existing holdings. Um, so if you're someone who's, who's into um, generating consistent income on your asset holdings, you can consider writing options by using this windows. And the other option is rolling over of um, option in this particular screen. Now you can select some of the options if you would change, let's say the expiration times and so on, it'll show all those um, positions of your existing options in your portfolio um, that could be meeting the criteria over here. So this is, uh, think of it as a filter function and it will show up over here and then you can um, just click on one of them and do your rolling out as you want to. Uh, if you would click over portfolio over here, it will show you all your um, existing positions, including your stock holdings, not just options trades. Again, I don't really use it much because um, I personally do not believe in rolling over options much. Um, people use it for the purpose of adjustments to their options trades, but I'm not a great fan of this adjustment technique. So um, I'm sorry, I wouldn't really be able to um, guide you much on this particular function. But the screen that I usually rely on a lot when it comes to options trading is this screen over here. What you can do is you can go on the right hand side top. Um, yeah, it is already showing me SPY, the S&P 500 index ETF, and it's a fairly liquid counter. So let's just select it. So over here, you can change any of your tickers. The other way you would find the option chain to be loaded like this is um, if you would go back to Mosaic again, if you select any of the assets over here, usually what happens is, in fact, it should happen all the time because all these tabs are interconnected. Um, the options trading window should automatically um, update the options chain. Sometimes it does not happen, so I'm not too fussed about that. So I can always change the option chain over here. Now let's look at the color coding of this option chain. You're seeing that some of the strikes are being shown on black color, some others are in blue. Same on the call side, some are in black, some are in blue. Essentially where the black ends for one and the other, that's where you would call it as the add the money strikes. So 442, 442.5 are the add the money strikes, you can say, because currently um, we saw that SPY was trading at 442.40. Um, when I'm shooting this video, the, the US markets are closed. So you wouldn't really see um, changes in the bid and ask price right now. So again, a very standard format. You have your calls on the left hand side and the puts on the right hand side of yours. And if you want to change this view, you can change it from here. You can change to list view, but I'm very comfortable with tab view only. And then here you can see how many strikes you want to see. I usually uh, restrict them to two standard deviations, but you can select all. So all the standard deviations, or you can also click over here, all. So it will show you all the strikes. And as you can see for SPY, even though it's trading at 442, you can see strikes till 235. I'm not a great fan, so I usually prefer two standard deviations because then uh, fetching up data becomes uh, really convenient and it becomes much faster. This is about the exchange. Always keep it to smart. You don't have to change. So that's about how this options chain is set up. One last thing to show here is these are the um, expiry timelines that you can change. If you click on more, you will see that the monthly options are shown as regular and the weeklies are shown with nothing written in front of them. You can even choose to get rid of weeklies and quarterlies. So it would only show you the monthly options over here. Um, so it's up to you how you want to see your layout. I'm pretty much okay with either of them. All right, now, so that was the options chain. Next, we would have a look at the strategy builder. So with strategy builder, what you can do is you can add multiple strikes into your order and then you create a basket and then you send that basket for order execution. Let's say I want to go with a bull put spread. So what I would do is I would look at the strike that I want to sell. Let's say I want to sell 438 strike. Here you can see that if I take it to the bid column, then it converts into red. Whereas if I take it to the ask column, it converts into blue, that is buy leg which is nothing but a shortcut. So if I would have clicked on bid, you can see that in the strategy builder, this strike is added, which is for the put option, but 
the action shown over here is sell by default. Why? Because I had clicked on the bid column. If I would have clicked on the blue column, which I would do for 436 strike for the put, you would see that by default, the action has been chosen as buy. So this in a way is a shortcut for you to be able to select what you want to do with a certain strike option. And here it will show me my payoff diagram and also the other related information when it comes to the Greeks, the bid ask and the differences that is the bid and ask are about four cents wide. And here I can select my order type and I can also select my limit price at which I want the order to be exe executed. And if I would click the submit, my order will be executed. But I do not really use Strategy Builder on this particular window. And I'll show you really shortly where exactly I use it. But before we wrap up, if you go here on the right hand side of Strategy Builder, you would see that there are some pre-built strategies over here. I don't really use these functions much because I'm you can think of me as an old school. I'm pretty much uh, comfortable selecting my own strikes and then um, entering into strategies. So I don't use them, but if you want to go with um, something that is already pre-built, you can use one of these options as well. Now, one last thing that I wanted to show you is if you go to new window over here and click on option trader, it will open up a new window for you. It has actually opened it up into one of the other screen of mine. So let me just pull it up into the screen that I am using for recording this video. So this is the screen that I usually utilize for putting in my orders. And the reason for that is very simple. I've got my same strategy builder over here. And what I do is I click on it and every time I click on any of the strikes, their respective options are added over here, pretty much in the same way, but it's just that there are some additional functions from this particular window that I can access. And that's why I prefer to go to this particular window to do my options trading. So again, repeating the same process, if I click on 438, it would add that same option over here. If I click on the buy side, it'll add the same option over here and it will show me the bull spread. It will immediately show me what's the best available credit. This is usually based on the recent order that was executed, but by all means you can change whatever is the amount that you want in the credit for this particular order. I'll keep it as it is. The other information that is usually helpful is if you click on profile, again, it will open that window into other screen of mine. So I'll drag it. From here, you can see the PNL graph. On the left hand side, you see a lot of important information. One of them is over here at the top left. It shows you what kind of a trade it is and the system is smart enough to recognize what strategy it is that you're trying to put on as it has already mentioned here that it's a bull put spread that you're trying to enter into. Other information, bid ask, and then what's your probability of profits and what's the max return and so on and how much is the um, margin that you're going to be blocking for this particular trade and also this min invest that is the negative 13 shows you how much is the credit you're going to get and what are your break even points and the commission and so on so you pretty much see all the um, key information related to this order in this screen and the other critical information is uh, the what if kind of scenarios so what you have over here is is 180. I think it's factoring in all the brokerages and taxes and commissions that you would pay. And therefore, if even if the underlying were to close over here, it has somehow factored in um, a bit of a debit from your account, which is although sounding weird, but I don't mind. Um, overall, yes, it is actually a very accurate graph that the interactive brokers would produce for you. Even if the asset were to drop by 30%, the max that you can lose is 84 because it's a risk defined strategy. And the same is shown over here as well. The max loss is going to be $84. The max return that you can expect is $16, which is going to be a credit, which again, doesn't make sense because you are not factoring in the commission that you would be paying for it as well as the taxes. So this is pre-commission and taxes payment is what has been shown over here. 
And again, if the asset were to keep going up, then regardless of where it goes, the max that you can earn is $16. You can actually change these scenarios based on some of Greek's information as well. I've never bothered to do that, but you can change both your PNL graph as well as the Greeks over here, as in what happens when some of the Greek move in one or the other direction. So um, if you're someone who would like to see where your delta is currently, or how much of a theta you're gaining on a daily basis, or how much short or long vega you are on a position, how much of a uh, gamma that you are seeing in your position, or if you actually want to gain additional advantage on going long or short on gamma, then you can pretty much have a look at these as well. So if you're good with Greeks, this piece of information is also very good. I every now and then do look at them, but this is not a key piece of information for me. Um, when I was a beginner, I used to look at them, but then I realized um, these are probably not the key informations for me to look at because they change almost on a daily basis. And this is how it shows the position would change over a given period of time. Again, I don't really use it much, but the dotted line would show you the changes and so on. So that was about the profile. Once again, I'll show you if you'll click on the profile, that's where you would be able to see. If you click on the add to code panel, what would happen is um, it would show this code over here on the top. So if you do not want to take a position right now, but you want to keep tracking what's happening, and if you have a certain price in mind when you want to enter into this trade, then you would have it over here and then you can execute the order. You can actually also add this particular trade in your watch list, but I forgot how to do that. But there's definitely a way you can add it into your watch list as well, maybe from here or somewhere. So if you are someone who wants to do that, um, you will just have to explore. I'm pretty sure that option exists. So this is all that I wanted to quickly cover in this video about options trading. If you do have any other questions, do let me know in the comments. And also, if you didn't understand any area or any area in particular that you do want me to cover in a separate video, you can just mention that in a comment and I'll make sure that I get back to you with uh, further more content on the TWS platform. Thank you and I'll see you soon with some more videos on the TWS.